Welcome back. In this video, we'll be going over gameplay for duels in YGO Omega, how chaining options work in automatic sims, and the timer system. The first thing we'll discuss is the interface. Understanding how you interact with the duel is the first way to get started when playing Omega. Checking cards is easy. Whether it's on the field or in the hand, the current display card will be enlarged to its full resolution when you use the zoom function. On desktops, you can hit the zoom hotkey, the default being the middle mouse button, or on PC or mobile, you can press and hold or tap and hold to be able to enlarge it to its full size. Just like picking up a card in real life, you can see the full image and card text. If the text is too large, you can easily scroll through the card text. You can do this by either using the mouse wheel or by clicking on it. You have the option to reduce the font size in the settings. Alternatively, you can also press the W hotkey to be able to open up the chat info box and read the card text there. The card log is opened by pressing the Q hotkey. You can also click on it to be able to view the history of cards that have been played and actions that have been taken. You can also click on the cards to be able to see them and read them. This is helpful during siding to be able to remember card types, attributes, and effects of opponent's cards. Most trading card games lack in-game chat for a reason. It's simply too difficult to moderate. Omega has taken a stance of self-moderation. You can mute your opponents, spectators, or both. Self-moderation is the goal, but if toxicity with a player gets out of hand, you can always report them to the Duelist Unite forum. Please remember to include the player's ID. You can find this by right-clicking their life point buyer or their image and pasting it into the report. It'll be a long set of numbers, and this will allow the team to be able to take action, should it be necessary. Incognito and Safe Mode both allow you to prevent stream sniping for the first time in Yu-Gi-Oh! by hiding your identity in-game. Incognito Mode will hide your name, avatar, sleeves, and playmat from your opponent. Safe Mode does the opposite, hiding your opponent's name, avatar, sleeves, and playmat. Neither of these will prevent either player from being able to make reports as IDs will still be copyable. The voice chat option, if both players enable it, will allow you to be able to talk to your opponent through Discord's functionality. Delay chain will allow you to be able to have a random delay between 1 and 3 seconds added to each window of response during the game. This can be used to easily bluff your opponent that you have a response when really you don't. This will only add the delay when your current chain option wouldn't prompt you to respond. We'll talk a little bit more about this later. When you happen to be resolving a card effect that causes you to either add a card from the deck or special summon a card from the deck, we've made it so that way you can have your deck fanned out in front of you, as well as opening up other options like your extra deck or graveyard to be able to see what you have currently in the game state. Once you close that, it'll automatically bring your options back up to finish resolving the card. In order to help avoid accidental changing of faces, we've made it so that way you must press and hold on the button that you wish to move to the phase of. The circle lights up as the button is held to show how close you are to changing the phase. This only takes a second, but is meant to help prevent accidental phase changes. The display card is shown in the upper left hand corner. If you no longer want this, you can go ahead and turn it off by toggling it off here. Update display card shows whether or not you want cards that your opponent adds to the hand or activates to take priority of what you're currently moused over. This can be helpful to help you identify cards that are being quickly added to the hand before you lose them. If you want to, however, prevent this from changing the card that you're currently looking at, you can go ahead and toggle it off. So that way only your mouse or finger tapping on the screen will change the display picture. The majority of the user interface is customizable in Omega. From the placement of the text box, the placement of the display card, and the size of the display card are all changeable along with the life point bars. There's also three different camera angles as well. Modern, which uses the full screen space. Stream, which allows you to provide room for your chat, camera overlays, and top down. This means that you have the ability to set everything exactly how you want it. When siding in YGO Omega, you can do it in two separate ways. You can either drag and drop your cards into the main deck, replacing the card that you wish, 
or you can right click to select multiple cards at once and then click swap. Once you click swap, it'll automatically switch your cards between the main deck and the side decks. This way, you can keep track of which cards you're selecting and which cards you're getting ready to side out. And make any last minute decisions if you want, rather than dragging and dropping multiple cards at once, only to change your mind later. Fancy graphics and visuals have to be balanced with functional gameplay. Today, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very fast game. People don't like having delays between their moves. For this reason, summon animations can slow or delay gameplay. In YGO Omega, the animations are asynchronous with the timing of the game. This means that no animation will pause or delay the game. It also means that you can even play faster than some of the animations take to complete. Common summon animations are kept to no longer than a half second in duration. While in official games, it's cool to see those summon animations the first few times. However, after the coolness wears off, most players simply skip them. In Omega, you don't have this issue. If however this does bother you, you can still turn off animations by simply clicking one button in the settings and applying it. But let's get to the heart of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reacting to your opponent's actions, or chaining. In real life, when you play Yu-Gi-Oh!, you communicate with your opponent to understand the flow of events and priority within the game whenever an action is taken. Special Summon. Does the summon resolve? Okay. Activate effect. Any response? Hmm. Okay, that's good. Each of these is an event in the game. Just like in real life, sometimes you just tell your opponent, I got nothing, go crazy, just so that way they stop asking you for a response. While other times you want to stop and think about what the opponent's doing before you give them the okay. This communication comes in the form of prompts when events happen. How many prompts you get is dictated based on the chaining option you have active in the moment. Let's say you're playing against a new deck you've never seen before. When your opponent plays a card, you want to stop and take the time to read each card before they resolve their effects until you get the flow of what their cards do. This would be comparable to all chain. When all chain is active, each point in the game will prompt you at every event that happens, during the summon window of a monster, a card activating, and effect triggering. Whether you can actually respond to it or not, this chain will stop and ask you to examine the field to understand what's happening before allowing the opponent to resolve their effect or activate other effects on the chain. If you do have a legal action to take, it'll instead ask you if you want to legally activate a card. This chaining option gives you the chance to activate your cards at a variety of times and also prompt you whenever you don't have a response so that way you can bluff your opponent into thinking you have a card that you can activate when really you don't. Due to all the prompts, however, it can lead to prompt fatigue, leading to the player just clicking no over and over and over, causing you to accidentally click no at an important junction when you actually wanted to activate a card effect. In Yu-Gi-Oh!, there's no chance to go back. Once an event has occurred, it's gone. If you do not respond to a chain, there is no chance of going and adding onto the chain once it starts resolving. This means it is extremely important to say no only when you mean it. But what if you know the deck you're playing against and you know exactly where to stop them? Or you only have cards that can be activated at specific activation requirements for timing? In this case, you most likely want to play with Auto Chain. By disabling all the other chain buttons, Auto Chain will be active and reduce the number of prompts you have to only key events. If a monster is summoned, if a card effect is activated, or if a monster attacks. Outside of this, you won't have the ability to activate cards when phase changes or when your opponent doesn't actively do anything. Trigger effects that meet their activations will still prompt you, but effects without any specific activation timing will not prompt you, causing you to accidentally skip a chance where you would want to. This could cause you to miss opportune moments when you'd want to activate cards that don't have activation timing, such as cards like anti-spell fragments during the standby phase, or a heavy storm duster during the opponent's end phase. But this would reduce the number of prompts you need for general gameplay and speed up your later turns, as you'll only be responding to your opponent's activations or summons anyway. Let's say that the only effects that you have available are effects that you wouldn't want to activate during your opponent's turn at any time. Something like, let's say, Miscellaneous Aerosaurus. During your opponent's turn when they're going first, it is a card that you could legally activate, but it's not something you'd ever want to. 
using some of the other chain options, it would lead you to get prompt after prompt after prompt for each summon or card activation that your opponent does. In a case like this, it would be better just to go let your opponent activate whatever they need to and summon whatever they need to without having you involved in the prompts. For this case, you'd want to use no chain. While no chain is active, you'll ignore all events where you could activate a card that doesn't have a trigger. For example, if you normal summon a Soul Leading Over Raptor and activate its effect, your opponent can respond with Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. If you have that Miscellaneous Sarasaurus in your hand, but you have no chain on, it will not prompt you to respond to your opponent's activation of Ash Blossom. This means that you'll miss out on the opportunity to be able to protect your Overraptor. Realistically, this is a very niche chain and should only be used when you have absolutely nothing that you want to use for your opponent's activations. A chaining option unique to Omega is the legal chain. When legal chain is active, it will ask you at each event that occurs, but only if you have a card that can be activated legally at that point. This means you have full control over exactly when you want to activate your cards, but won't be bothered with prompts that you have no interactions with. This provides you the opportunity to read the cards you can interact with, decide if you want to use them, while still giving you full control over activating cards at points when your opponent changes phases, or even during uniquely specific times during the game. This can also help you understand the different states in the game, the open game state, or the fast effect window timing that happens before you enter an open game state, as well as the different steps in the battle. Some critiques of auto sims have stated that there's an unfair level of game knowledge that you can get from your opponent because of these chain systems, as you can feel the delay that's introduced with each of these prompts. Each time your opponent says no to a prompt, you'll be able to tell that they have a card that can be activated during that activation or summon window. While this is true for relying on a single chain method, you can actually game the system by mixing up your chain usage or using the delay chain option in the settings. For example, if you have Nibiru in hand, but you know that your opponent will be summoning far beyond five times in the turn before they get to a point that they can stop you from Nibiru, you could turn on no chain. After the fifth summon, you won't start getting prompts, making your opponent believe you do not have the Nibiru in hand. Once the opponent has gone into their plays past the point of no return, you can go ahead and turn on legal chain, and when they're attempting to leave the phase or summon their next monster, you can go ahead and respond with Nibiru. The opposite is also true. When you have no hand traps, but you want to make your opponent play suboptimally around it, you can wait until the fifth summon and turn on all chain. This will start introducing a delay, and you can say no to bluff to your opponent that you have it when you don't. This can also be done with trap cards, making your opponent believe that you have a card like Solemn Judgment that can negate summons, as you'll be prompted for the summon negation window, even if you can't legally respond to it. You can also map the hotkeys for the yes and no responses to these prompts in the settings. By default, no is mapped to the right mouse click and yes is mapped to Y. You can even swap chains with the hotkeys A, D, and S for all chain for A, D for legal chain, and S for no chain. You can even switch the way the chains react from selecting the different chain mode in the settings, going between toggle, hold, or both options. This way, you can switch chains for an upcoming event and then switch back to your preferred type quickly and easily. Let's go over the timer system that Omega uses. Have you ever wondered what type of timer systems are used in turn-based games? Making a timer system is not easy. If you give a player too much time, they can stall. If you give them too little time, they won't have enough time to complete their combos. Omega has used the system of a starting time and an incremental gain per movement. You start with the default idle time specified for the match. In ranked, it's 180 seconds. Every time you complete an action, you gain 3 seconds back per move that you make. This was actually the original timer system that was created in YGO Pro Percy as far back as 2014. There is a situation, however, where a player can exploit and gain infinite time. This is called a hostage loop. An example of this is if you bring back a Zodiac Whiptail with Chalkanine. The Whiptail's effect is negated, 
However, it's not a once per turn activation. This means that you can activate the whip tail, attempting to equip it onto the Chalcanine as many times as you can click the button. With the original system implemented in YGO Pro Percy, each time you click this button, you would be given back three seconds, even if it only took you half a second to complete the action. With this system, you would gain as much time as you can click the button. Your opponent would have nothing they can legally do to be able to stop this, because it's a legal activation with no end result. However, to circumvent this, in Omega, we've implemented a maximum gain of 300 seconds per turn. So, totaling this all up, your default 180 seconds in a match, plus the 360 seconds that you can gain through actions, results in a maximum time for a turn of 9 minutes, or 540 seconds. This is enough time to complete even the longest of combos, provided that you understand what you're doing. I want to thank you for watching this video, and if you need any more help or want to be a part of an awesome community, feel free to join us on Discord at https colon slash slash discord.gg slash duelistunite. We hope to see you there.